Hello, in this video, I'm going to explain how to add vectors graphically and mathematically. Uh, first off, the content and language objectives. The content objective is I can add vectors graphically and by using trigonometry. A language objective is I can write my own step-by-step -step procedure for adding vectors. Uh, this video assumes some background knowledge in trigonometry, so if you don't already have that background knowledge, I'd recommend watching a previous video that I've made on this topic. Uh, first off, what is a vector? A vector is often just drawn as an arrow. Uh, and a vector has two different parts of it that I'll refer to. A tail is the back end of an arrow and the tip as the front end of an arrow. Uh, there are two important quantities that uh, a vector has. The first is magnitude, is the size or the length of a given vector. And the second thing is a direction. So which way is it pointing? Uh, an example of a vector that we would have talked about or will talk about is velocity. It has a quantity, 35 miles per hour, uh, and it has a direction north. And so that's the difference between speed and velocity is velocity is a vector, speed is a scalar. Uh, in terms of directions, there are four different quadrants in a four quadrant graph. The x values are always going to be positive in quadrant one and quadrant four. Uh, y values are always going to be positive in quadrant one and quadrant two. So the key thing to keep track of is when you are adding or subtracting vectors later, uh, anything that's up or to the right is going to be a positive value. Anything down or to the left is going to end up with uh, some negative values. First off, the easier of the two processes is how do you add vectors graphically? And so if you're just given vectors like this, how do you put them together? And so I've shown four different vectors with the different colors here, vectors one, two, three, and four. The way that you add vectors graphically is you just start with any vector, it doesn't matter which one, and then you add them tail to tip. So you take the tail of vector two and add it, you know, transpose it right at the end of vector one. You add the tail of vector three to the tip of vector two. You add the tail of vector four to the tip of vector three. Uh, and then what you do is when you graph anything, any graph, any vectors, uh, you, when you add them graphically, excuse me, uh, what you're going to do is, is start from the very beginning to the very end. That's what's called a resultant vector. So when you add all of these vectors graphically, start to end point is your resultant. Uh, subtracting vectors uh, or multiplying vectors can be a topic that uh, people get a little confused by. And so the easy thing to keep track of with subtracting vectors uh, is that you are just going to add the opposite of that vector. So to go back again to show you this, if you have an arrow that's pointed down and to the left and you're subtracting that vector, uh, what you can do instead is flip that arrow and then just add the vector again, tail to tip like you have before. If you multiply vectors, you just add the vector twice. So if you have two V2, you just put V2 on and then you add it a second time at the tip of the first one. Uh, subtracting vectors, here is our resultant uh, from that previous example. Again, I've just added the two vectors, uh, tail to tip, and then I took the resultant and marked from the very beginning to the very end of these vectors. I uh, in black is a double arrow is typically how this is done. Uh, the more difficult concept with adding vectors, I think at least, is adding vectors mathematically. Adding vectors mathematically, this is where you need your trigonometry background. And so what you're going to have to do is take a given vector. You need to be given a magnitude and a direction. Uh, and what you're going to do is resolve that into X and Y components. So if you're given an angle, uh, if you're given your hypotenuse of this imaginary triangle, pretend that each um, of your vectors is a triangle, you can resolve it to your X component and your Y component. I'd notice that the Y component here has a negative value because you're moving down. Uh, the X has a positive value because you're moving towards the right. And so if you add the vector that we were just looking at, and this second vector, I'm going to skip through the trigonometry process, assuming that you have that background. Again, if you don't, please go back and review that. Uh, you have then X and Y values for your two triangles, for your two vectors uh, that we've resolved uh, using SOHCAHTOA in trigonometry background. Uh, then what you do, your next step, once you've resolved those components into X and Y values, is you are just going to add the X values and you're going to add the Y values. And so what you end up with is, and I tried to draw this as best I could to scale, uh, is a triangle where you know the total X value, you know the total Y value. Again, leaning back on some of our trigonometry background, uh, you can solve for the uh, C value uh, using the Pythagorean theorem. 
uh, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. And what we end up with is a c value, a hypotenuse value for this right triangle, uh, that's 49.55. Uh, finally, the last step to this process, again, using trigonometry, uh, we can solve for what is that angle. Uh, what I came up with is 11.58 degrees. Uh, keep in mind your calculator needs to be in degrees, not radians. Otherwise, you'll come up with some incorrect answers. Uh, and so what I've done is I've just uh, resolved this triangle. I started off with two triangles. I broke them into X and Y components uh, and then added them together. I used some trigonometry to solve for some unknowns. Uh, that's the end of this video describing how to uh, add vectors graphically and using trigonometry uh, or mathematics. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to stop by during our homework help hours or period 1A. Uh, thank you very much and have a great day.